The climactic battle in Harold Lloyd's 1926 movie, The Kid Brother, features some of his cleverest and funniest gags. But these bright moments emerge from a setting, an abandoned shipwreck that looks like something from a horror movie, lit in a chiaroscuro film noir style, with Harold pursued by a monstrous, subhuman brute bent on murder. The laughs, as they often did in Lloyd's comedy, emerge from terror. In his magisterial study, The Silent Clowns, critic Walter Kerr compared Harold Lloyd to the other great comics of the 20s, Charlie Chaplin and Buster Keaton, and advanced an explanation for some particular traits in Lloyd's work. In brief, he argues that Chaplin and Keaton were both troubled souls, their backgrounds having imbued them with a measure of pessimism and an experience of suffering, which is apparent in their work. Chaplin's association with his tramp character compelled him to continually reenact his impoverished childhood, while Keaton's knockabout upbringing is reflected in his taste for the mordant and bizarre. If comedy comes from anger, as some suggest, both men had a lot to be angry about. But Lloyd was inherently more optimistic than those two. He looked taller, more athletic and strapping on screen, and his persona exudes sunniness, positivity, and a Horatio Alger can-do spirit. The great danger for him was that, compared to his rivals, he might seem dull. Likeable, yes, but not fascinating. But Lloyd evolved strategies to counteract this potential problem. His previous screen character was Lonesome Luke, a kind of gawky, obnoxious Chaplin impression. Luke was popular, but not with Lloyd. He knew he had to find his own persona. The first thing he did was don the famous glasses. These added a welcome vulnerability to his appearance. Though still prone to rowdiness at this point, he was assuming the aspect of underdog. Building on this winning formula, Lloyd began to heap troubles on himself. With almost masochistic relish, he subjected his character to violence, humiliation, and peril, forcing us to sympathize with his misfortunes, even as we laughed at the outrageous situations. If Harold Lloyd had no dark side he was willing to expose, the world certainly did, and Lloyd used it to add shading to the stories he told. Hence those skyscrapers. Lloyd, far more than his peers, exploited the emotions of suspense and terror to the point where some audiences can barely stand the anxiety. Against the convincing danger of death, his character's innocent goodness stood out more clearly. He would overcome his fears, but only after the most merciless testing. He would beat the odds and attain mastery over whatever forces opposed him. He would, in film after film, go from zero to hero, showing that an average guy could achieve greatness with nothing more than pluck and determination to succeed. The Kid Brother epitomizes Lloyd's storytelling technique. Drawing from the example of the 1921 drama Tollable David, a rustic bit of Americana which starred Richard Bartlemus as a boy who becomes a man through heroic striving, but also essentially remaking a 1924 Glenn Tryon comedy called The White Sheep. Lloyd portrayed a version of his usual character struggling to emerge from the shadow of his supermanly father and brothers. Harold Hickory's position is a humiliating one, inviting audience sympathy, especially as he struggles to win out, using his native cunning where his meagre strength won't cut it. The story applies more pressure until it's Harold who must save the family name and his father's life, defeating a terrifying murderer in a dark death trap of a location. This spooky shipwreck comes complete with its own Dutch tilts, and the film noir lighting really evokes the kind of place where we expect bad things to happen. Can Lloyd really stage slapstick in such an environment? He can, and the jokes seem to gain an added edge from their scary surroundings. The role of the heavy is central here. A human opponent as scary as a fall from a tall building, wrestler Konstantin Romanov, is ugly, malign and powerful. It's a shock to see him in the same frame as the Sweet Harold. He barely seems to belong in the same film or genre. 
Harold's inoffensiveness doesn't seem bland in this context, but rather the light balancing the dark. Something about a climate of fear is conducive to laughter. There's a deep, mysterious connection. Horror films and comedies both achieve their effects by building and then releasing tension. Notice how an audience often laughs after a scare in a horror movie. Lloyd was a master at wringing laughs from fear. That's where the monkey comes in. We don't know for sure who this monkey is. One source suggests Lloyd may have called him Chicago. Others have suggested he was named Jocko. But the most convincing claim is that he was a she named Josephine. Josephine also worked with Chaplin in the circus and Keaton in the cameraman which would make her one of a very select list of performers to share the screen with all three comedy greats during the silent era. And here's Josephine, disguised as Mickey Mouse, in a talkie, adding Laurel and Hardy to her roster of famous co-stars. The monkey is actually a pet and accomplice of the killer, Constantine, and causes a lot of trouble for Harold. And although the suspense is real, there's also comedy in the notion of such a small, cute creature posing a deadly threat. Harold turns the threat to his advantage, using the monkey as decoy. It's a trick that has the quality of a myth, like Ulysses punking the Cyclops. Our simian friend now resembles a circus clown, or even Chaplin's tramp. The outsized boots enlarged to cartoon proportions. The walk, a drunken lopsided lope. In that darling little sailor suit, the monkey was already a kind of uncanny mini-human. The footwear renders things positively surreal. Split-second timing, no doubt enhanced by instructions yelled from off-screen by both animal trainer and director, create a kind of alfresco bedroom farce of near misses. Our hope that Harold's ruse will gain him a lasting advantage is in tension with our desire to see the surly Romanov's face when he discovers he's been tricked. And running underneath all of this is the terror, which Lloyd, the comedian, who is a boy next door, an optimist, a winner, so often exploited to add shading to his comedy universe.